By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to a brand new episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Vienna for unfortunately the very last time. But the reason that this is the last time is because it is the finals, the big finals of Vienna Geddon. And I'm just really looking forward to this. I am pumped. Are you pumped? We have Oliver, a former Magic the Gathering uh, professional who is playing robots. Uh, so it's uh, his deck is mainly blue and red, but also some black for anime dead. Just a very interesting, uh, interesting list with no Sages of Latinam. It's the first robots deck I've seen in ages without a Sage of Latinam. And he's playing against Thomas. And guess what? Thomas is also playing robots, but he is playing Sage of Latinam. And his deck also includes some other interesting cards. Uh, like, for example, Transmute Artifact, one of my favorite cards actually from Antiquities. Um, but I've, I've got a lot of favorite cards. Now that, now that I say this, I realize that. He's also playing with, for example, Hercules Recall, another card that I really like, and I should probably play more. So I'm really curious to see like who's going to win this and maybe if these differences in the decks is going to be decisive or maybe it's just going to be luck of the draw, right? It, it, it can both happen, especially in a mirror match. But before I continue with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. First, a quick message from the sponsor of this video, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to dive into those deck decks. We're going to start with the player on the left, that is Oliver. Let's take a look at his deck. And here we see the deck of Oliver. So, I mean, this is really your robots deck, right? It's, uh, it's in a way, it's kind of standard, but it's always interesting to see when people play like such a like famous deck, I guess, right? Because it's really one of the tier one decks in old school to kind of see, okay, how do you play it? What choices have you made? So if we're looking at this, the first thing you notice is what a beautiful collection. It's all black bordered. So <laughs> that is really sweet, Oliver. Um, and then we're seeing four uh, Triskelions, four Suchis. We're seeing four copy artifacts. I mean, so far... That makes complete sense. And then he's kind of shaving, right? Because we're seeing that he's playing with two counter spells. Um, I'm pretty sure I can't really see it right now, but I'm sure a mana drain is in there somewhere. Um, but because you're kind of shaving on your counter magic, you have more uh, space for other cards. So for example, he's gone for three psionic blasts and he's playing a Dance of Many. Now I've seen Dance of Many before in other brews as well. And it's, it's quite interesting because the Dance of Many can make a copy of your Trike or Suchi also for two mana, which is the same casting cost as, of course, your copy artifact. And yes, you have the upkeep cost you have to pay, which can be a nuisance. But on the other hand, sometimes a two blue mana can mean, you know, it's a bolt because you copy a Trike, you can take the counters off straight away, and maybe those three damage can give you the victory. Or, you know, maybe you're later in the game and those two extra blue mana, they don't really matter. But... The, the key here is that the starting casting cost of this card is just two mana, just like a copy artifact. So it's like you're playing with five copy artifacts, which is, you know, quite good because copy artifact itself, that's an insane card. A nice thing, by the way, to note about the copy artifact that I, uh, I discovered in my, in my years of playing old school is that when you cast it, it's a blue card, but as soon as it hits the battlefield and you target the artifact, it actually becomes colorless because the artifact is colorless as well. So that means that you cannot play a red elemental blast on it anymore when it has kind of resolved and hit the table. You can use your red elemental blast to counter the copy artifact, but you cannot destroy the copy artifact once it's on the table. So that's kind of a nice little side note. Um, and then when we're looking at the other cards, he is playing with three black cards. Of course, Demonic Tutor Mind Twist, right? Yeah, you know. Um, and then he's also playing with Anime Death. So one Anime Death in there as well. So I, I, I like those one-offs in decks, you know. I like the Dance of Many. I like the Anime Death. That kind of makes it interesting. He's also playing with two Shatters Main and only with two Bolts. So I, I can imagine it. It must be tempting to go for a full play set of bolts and maybe only for one psionic blast but he's gone for three psionic blasts and two bolts now of course a psionic blast also an instant a little bit more expensive to cast than the bolt 
but it deals four damage. So it can take care of those Sarah Angels that we've seen so much at uh, this tournament. So I kind of understand uh, this decision. And then, of course, in the sideboard, we see the Abyss. The Abyss, a card that you used to see a lot main, actually, in these robot decks because there's just so much synergy. But in this case, they went in the sideboard. Another card in the sideboard is Sydney in a Bottle. There's another one card that can have... Uh, a huge impact and then we also see some red elemental blasts and just you know some some choices you would uh you can expect of course some blood moons blood moon of course is great if you yourself have that uh, that uh, artifact strategy because it's easy to cast artifacts although when we're looking at the mana base only playing with two basic islands so a blood moon can kind of wreck him as well but of course when you are the player with the Blood Moon, you decide when you're gonna gonna cast the Blood Moon. So usually then it doesn't backfire, although that could happen. We do see, of course, that extra basic blue uh, land in his sideboard. So I guess when he boards in his uh, Blood Moons, he is gonna board in that extra blue mana as well. I always like it when you kind of see players having having an, having a plan with the Blood Moon. Like sometimes when I see, including some of my lists, where I see, okay, you've got a Blood Moon in the side but it's really going to hurt you as well. But probably then your philosophy is it's going to hurt my opponent more. And yes, sometimes that's true, but sometimes that can really backfire. So I like it when you kind of, in this case, have that extra basic in there to make that transition not perfect, but a little bit more smooth, uh, smoother. Anyway, this is the deck of Oliver. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Thomas. So this is a robots deck. And of course, that refers to the many robots in the deck, the artifact creatures, four Suchis, four Triskelions, and one, and I like that, one Tetravis. I think Tetravis is such a cool creature. Maybe kind of zoom in on that. It's a six casting cost, just like a trike. It's a one, one flyer and comes into play with three plus one plus one counters as well. So basically it's a four, four flyer. And during your upkeep, you can take those counters off to make little one, one flying tokens. Um, tetravites. So it's a Tetravis and you can make take the tokens off making Tetravites. So they're 1-1 one, one flying creatures and of course that goes together quite well with two cards that are also in this deck. The Atok because you can feed those tokens to the Atok and then you know you can give it plus 2 plus 2 every time you sack an artifact. So you can give it plus 6 plus 6 as a boost in total. Um, and then it works even better with the blue card Sage of Letnam. Sage of Letnam is a creature from Antiquities. You can tap it sacrifice a creature and draw a card that means that potentially one tetravis could draw you four cards now the problem with this tetravis is that usually it is just too slow because it needs to be into play you need to wait a whole turn cycle then you can take the plus one plus one counters off and of course those counters become creatures that have again summoning sickness so you also have to choose between or hitting for four or taking the counters off i guess if you're thomas and you put them in your deck you're almost always going to take the counters off so i'm curious to see if that's also true, if he's going to do that or did he, or if he has a different line of play. Um, but it is, of course, a good creature. It's got a lot of potential. Also, can you imagine taking the counters off, then sacking it to the Sage, draw a card, having your Tetravis in the bin, and then use an Animate Dead to get it back. And you can do the same trick over again, draw even more cards. You know, that's kind of, I guess, the dream that you can have with the Tetravis. And of course, uh, when we're talking about a robots deck, it is being combined with those copy artifacts, four copy artifacts in total. That makes perfect sense. Kind of the key card in this deck, right? You want to get your trike out early, then you want to start copying them with your uh, copy artifacts. And of course, the strategy to get those trikes out early, um, you know, the, the mana vault really fits that strategy. That's the altered cards there in the, mid in the middle. He's playing with three in total. Um, they're one to cast, you tap for three, then during your upkeep, you've got to untap them. And if you don't, you take a damage. So that's basically the deck. But what I find more um, interesting about this brew from Thomas is probably the sideboard. Because look at that sideboard. He can take all the robots out and he can transform the deck kind of in a, yeah, in a very cool red-blue deck with three Sheevan Dragons. He can board into Blood Moons. Um, you know, he can go very anti-blue, of course, with the red Elemental Blast. So I kind of, kind of like in that side of the strategy as well i guess he's not going to board out all the robots but he could go pretty heavily on red and then he also has that little black package with the abyss and also there are two glooms in the sideboard but of course there's a very slim chance that we're actually going to see those black cards as a matter of fact i think the chance is pretty much zero because the opponent of thomas of course is oliver also playing with a robots deck so i mean We've discussed the deck of Thomas. We looked at the deck of Oliver. That only means one thing. We are ready for the finals right here. Vienna get in 2024. Who will be our champion, Oliver or Thomas? Let's find out. Game number one here of the finals of Vienna get in. We're about to start and look at this. Oliver, the player on the left, taking a double mulligan. 
starting with a measly five cards here in the finals. That is a bad way to start your finals. Does have a pretty good opener, I guess, with uh, Volcanic Island, Mox Sapphire, Mox Pearl, and also does have a Brain Geyser in hand. Oh, look at this Thomas there, playing a Library of Alexandria. The things uh, are only getting worse for Oliver. Great, of course, for Thomas, who's uh, immediately drawing that extra card, playing a Mox Jet. So I believe seven in hand then now, tapping the Jet. There is a uh, Mana Vault. So very good start here for Thomas. Okay, and there we see the Strip Mine from the top. Look at that. So both players seem to uh, seem happy. Of course, Oliver a little bit more. Remember, this is the finals. But also, I think if you're Thomas, I mean, the Loa already replaced itself. It's still a great opener. And Oliver still had to take that double mulligan. So um, there's just a pass, though. No Suchi, no pressure for Thomas. And here we see a Brain Geyser for two. So, uh, I mean, he's, he's getting some card draw going. Mox Ruby passing the turn. There's a Transmute Artifact there from the top. Could be interesting together with the Mana Vault. Gonna tap six. And there's a Triskelion, so that's of course a 4-4. Four, four. I'm predicting we're gonna see a lot of trikes here in this matchup. Both players playing a full playset. And tapping two into Fower Stone, and there's the Atog. And this is interesting. I mean, this Atog is looking pretty good, to be honest. I mean, he's got four artifacts to feed to it. This is kind of annoying for Thomas. The question is, is he going to attack with the uh, with the trike here? Does have an, an is that an anime dead in his hand? So could consider attacking if that's an animate, that black card there. So turning the trike sideways. I mean, even if you wouldn't have the animate, you can still think, you know what? If he blocks, he has to sack two of his mana sources. So it's still a two for one, even though the the Atox survives. Yeah, and Oliver really here in the tank trying to think what is the best thing to do. What are the consequences now if I start sacking my artifact mana? It's probably going to sack the pearl and the ruby. You know, you want to keep that blue mana because of his counter magic and the flower stone can, you know, basically make red and blue. So there's the block with the Atox. I wonder, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not just going to jump, right? Maybe he's just waiting for Thomas to see if he wants to respond. There is a sack, so it's now a 3-4. So he needs to sack another artifact to kill the trike, would make it a 5-6. Again, waiting for a response to happen, doesn't happen. Then he sacks the ruby. So it's now a 5-6, and the trike is going to die. And, ooh, there's a Suchi. Hitting the board, but there's a counter spell though, and that's the last card in hand for Oliver. Ooh, is that a psionic blast from the top? That is actually kind of nice. We see a damage here for Thomas. He's dropping to 18. Of course, took a damage earlier from his own vault, I believe. Yeah, exactly. If he wants to untap it, he's got to pay four for it. That's what he does. Finding a card now from the top. Is that a copy artifact? Yeah, I believe so. Does he have land? He does. Okay, there's an island. So he's got four mana. I believe that's... Is that a trike there in his hand? Passing the turn. So there's the attack with the Atox. He's going to drop to 17. He's going to untap. Okay, this, this can be a big turn for Thomas, actually. This is a big thing. He's got a strip mine in hand. Got that from the top. So at least he's got a land drop. Could also use it, of course. Could take out the volcanic, for example. It's going to tap five. Going to tap six. Are we going to see that one trike there? There's a Triskelion. Okay, so Triskelion hitting the board. Is he going to play the copy on it? Yeah, there's the copy artifact. Okay, so now there's a moment for Oliver to decide, do you want a Psionic Blast the Triskelion? If you do, then of course Thomas has to choose another target for his copy artifact. Yeah, and I think you kind of have to do this, but it's actually not that bad for Thomas because Oliver's going to take two more points of damage here. And of course you can point those three points of damage to the Atok and kind of put Oliver on a dif uh, difficult spot in a difficult position. That's what I'm trying to say here. 
is going to make it into a 3-4 so that the ATOC doesn't die. Then probably going to shoot that last counter onto the life total here of Oliver and hopefully he's going to use the dice as well because yeah, I'm not quite sure what his total life total is right now. I believe still pretty high. He's like on 18 or something. And we see Thomas here copying the Felwer Stone, passing the turn, not playing out the strip mine. There's the attack with the Atox, so Thomas is going to drop to 16. I wonder if he's going to use a transmute on the Mana Vault. He's going to tap 2. Copying the Vault, tapping. Oh, he's going pretty much all in here. Hand is empty again. He, now he does have a Suchi on board, so Suchi and Atok, and no creatures for Thomas. And it looks like he's going to pass the turn back here to Thomas. Oh, and look at this. We had a glitch, I believe. So we're back here on the battlefield with, uh, with an attack by the Atok. So we see Thomas here on 15. It looks like not that much has changed. There's an Ancestral Recall here being drawn from the top. So unfortunately, we're missing a few minutes. But we are back. And he's tapping an island for that Ancestral Recall. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed with how well Oliver is able to kind of make this into an actual game after that uh, double mole going to five cards. Oh, there's a Mind Twist in hand there for Thomas. Usually a great card, but not useful now. And here we see Thomas using the Strip Mine on the Volcanic. Yeah, I don't think we've missed much, much to be honest. I mean, Thomas just has to find a way to stabilize. Has the anime dead, so can just get back, of course, a trike. And that's exactly what he does. But remember, with anime dead, your creature gets minus uh, one, minus oh, so it's a three, four. So it's actually a really bad blocker against Atsuchi. You could, of course, then double block with your factory. Two cards in hand still. One is a Mind Twist. The other one I can't identify. Oh, three cards, actually. Oh, and we seem to have... Okay, we're back. We had a little glitch there. Let's take a look. The things have changed a little. We see a Black Lotus on the side of Oliver. So perhaps he top-decked that. And then we see that the Suchi has gone. And we also see a Trike now. And Oliver giving up. Oh, man. That's kind of... There were some glitches here in game one. The good news is I've checked game number two and three. There are no glitches in there. But this was a bit unfortunate, missing, uh, missing that ending of this game. I mean, we could still see Oliver's scoop, of course, but I would have loved to see what happened there. Because when we left them, he had a, uh, a Suchi and, uh, and that uh, Atok. And uh, Thomas had only that uh, three Fortress Scallion on board. But I guess he found another trike from the top and a way to get rid of that Suchi because we saw that the Suchi was, uh, was in the graveyard and it looked like, looked like Oliver didn't uh, top deck much, just the Black Lotus and uh, that's it. So game number one is now in the books. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to uh, catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here of the Vienna Geddon Finals is about to start. Oliver, of course, on the play under tremendous pressure, has to win this. If he loses, it is all over and Thomas will be our champion. So let's take a look at the first seven cards. Remember, Oliver took a mulligan to five in the first game. But look at that hand of Thomas. There's a library of Alexandria in Thomas's hand. And it looked like, oh, it looked for a moment that Oliver was going to go uh, and take another mulligan again. But he's not. No lands in hand, though. Mox Ruby into Soaring, into Felverstone. Oh, ho, ho, and look at this. And Oliver's like, are you kidding me? But uh, it is what it is for him here. So uh, Library of Alexandria hitting the board. And it's going to be really difficult for Oliver. Thomas here drawing an extra card with the Loa, of course. And then a card for turn. Playing the Underground Sea. Let's see what he can do. Perhaps he's got a discard here. Discarding the Wheel of Fortune, passing the turn. And of course, a wheel not necessary here. And I mean, this Underground Sea at least gives Oliver access to blue mana. That is kind of the silver lining here. Let's see if he can do something with that blue mana. He's going to tap three, it seems. What can he do for three? There's a copy artifact. I wonder if he's going to copy the Felverstone or the Soul Ring. That's kind of the question here. 
So he is going to copy the soul ring. So he's got two soul rings, meaning next turn he's got six mana can start deploying the Triskelions. There is another island here. And I mean, I think if you're Thomas, if you have a copy artifact, I would be tempted to copy. Oh, he's going to go for time walk. That's even better. But I would be tempted to copy the soul ring. It's going to go for time walk here. So obviously, it's looking very good here for Thomas with that active library. There's a volcanic. Has two copy artifacts, I believe, in hand. Also, a red elemental blast to counter any potential copies from Oliver. And of course, if you're if you're Thomas here, I mean, this is going to, you know, this is going to take some time because you have so many options. There is a uh, mana vault drawn from the top, so he's got eight cards in hand, I believe. Drops the mana vault and passes the turn. Yeah, why would you hurry up? You have all the time in the world. You're ahead on cards. You probably have counter magic in hand. Just you know, pass the turn and let's see what Oliver can do. He is finding a Mistress Factory. He can play that out. I wonder if he's gonna tap out here for the Triskelion. I mean, he could keep exactly the mana vault open. Are we going to see a counterspell? No counterspell, because I wanted to say could keep the Felwer Stone, I mean, untapped to play the Red Elemental Blast if necessary in response to a counterspell from Thomas, but that counterspell never came. So now we have the situation where there's a Triskelion, at least on a battlefield for Oliver. But of course, Thomas still has that active Loa, and he's got, I believe, two copy artifacts in hand, so he can start copying the Triskelion here off Oliver. He's going to tap four here. It's a little bit in the tank. I mean, I would be personally tempted to just copy the trike here. He's going to tap six instead. There's his Triskelion here, so now he also has a trike. And then, now it makes me wonder if he really has copy artifacts there in hand, or maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe they're not copies. He does have another trike in hand for sure. Anyway, here's an island being played out by Oliver. He's going to tap two. There's a shatter on the trike of Thomas. And I think he just has to accept it. Probably going to shoot three points of damage here to Oliver. That's exactly what happened. So Oliver's going to drop to 17. And look at that. He's going to animate as well. Attack here for six. So 14 here for Thomas. 17 for Oliver. There's the pass turn. So hopefully uh, Oliver is also going to track his life with the dice. If not, I'll try to uh, keep track of it and keep you up to date. And there is a, uh, a life loss because of the manifold there. So Thomas dropping to 13. Going to draw an extra card, of course. Ooh, there is a copy artifact for sure. So I guess those two cards in his hand weren't copy artifacts at all. But just other cards or else I'm sure he would have played it out. Anyway, copy artifact here on the trike. And of course, there is this option for Oliver to respond. And say, I'm going to kill my own trike. But nope, instead he's going to play a red elemental blast. Countering the copy artifact. And there's another copy artifact here. So making another Triskelion here. So it's really Triskelion battle. You can kind of expect that, of course, in a, in a robot's mirror match. The trike being extremely important. And now we've got seven cards in hand for Thomas and only three cards in hand here for Oliver. And I believe one of those cards is a Counterspell and also a, a Psionic Blast. So it could choose to fire off a Psionic Blast here. Yep, that's exactly what he does. There's a Psionic Blast. So since Thomas is tapped out, I'm expecting him just to shoot the three points of damage to Oliver. That would mean he would drop to 14. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. So Oliver is now on 14. Oh, and look at this. Again, an attack for six. And I mean, if you're Thomas, you got to start worrying here. He's on seven, which is quite low. And I mean, again, I'm impressed with how well Oliver is doing, considering uh, that active Loa that he's playing against. For some reason, he manages to get Thomas here on, on seven. He himself is still on 14. 
it is really tough for Thomas. Like in a, in a, he's in a tough position. Has that mana vault as well? Does he want to untap it? I mean, dropping to six is risky. Taking a card for turn. There's a Sage of Letnam. Haven't seen a single Sage yet in this uh, entire match. I mean, Sage actually doesn't look that bad here because it's, because it's cheap to cast and it blocks a creature. At least kind of, you know, stops the bleeding for, for one turn or at least a few points of damage. It's going to tap two. And of course, if it survives, you can sack your Vault. But, ooh, look at this. Going to tap four using the mana from his Library of Alexandria, understanding the danger that he's in at the moment. There's a Suchi. Okay, that's actually a very good blocker here. There's the Counterspell, but he kept the card open, could counter this with the, exactly, with the Red Elemental Blast. For a moment there, I thought he just uh, wanted to put the Suchi in the bin, but, you know, of course, it's better to counter if you have that option. And he's got the 4-4 now, couldn't see that top deck. And what does he have? A Wheel of Fortune. Oh, this is huge. This wheel could give Oliver the victory here, and that would be exceptional starting with a library against you and with that opener missing a land drop as well etc 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 but he can come back completely here this wheel is huge oliver on 14 thomas on six what are we gonna see here does he have a side blast okay first there's a shatter that's it oh of course shatter is enough thomas will step out he can attack and man you can see Oliver being extremely happy and I can understand why because I really thought after that start of that horrible start frame of game two that Thomas would have this in the bag. But no sir, Oliver winning game number two and I'm happy because that means we're gonna go to game number three. Game number three here of Vienna Geddon is about to begin the last game of the tournaments, the finals. And here we see the hand of Thomas I believe I'm missing Lance, I think. This is the hand of Oliver, also a little freeze. Going a little bit too fast to really see what was on there, but look at that, Oliver also taking a mulligan. So both players here went back uh, to shuffling and now they're getting a fresh seven. And of course they have to put one of the cards here on the bottom, London mulligan rules here at Vienna Geddon. And I mean, uh, this is gonna be uh, very, very tense here. I really don't know who's the favorite. Of course, Thomas uh, is on the play. So that makes, gives him a little advantage, right? But these games have shown that that doesn't really matter that much. So both players here are putting a card on the bottom and we're ready to go. Thomas here starting with a Mox Emerald, tapping the Emerald for a Mana Vault and then playing an Underground Sea. Look at this opener. Oh, ho, ho! a Mind Twist for three. I mean, Thomas is really finding the openers here. Wow, every single game thus far, he's had an, an amazing start, including this one. Mind Twist for three. And again, Oliver will have to fight back from behind. Very cool Mega Man sleeves, by the way. Didn't notice them before. So four, he's going to lose the Underground Sea, going to lose the Suchi, and he's going to lose the Mana Drain. Only three measly cards left here. So Oliver again in a difficult position, does have the Mox Ruby. Oh, and a Volcanic. I believe he also had a copy artifact, so could consider copying something. He's not doing it though, passing the turn. Thomas taking a damage, goes to 19. And you can see Oliver here thinking, oh man, how am I going to get out of this? And look at that, no gas in hand apparently, nothing to do here for Thomas just to pass the turn. Passing here as well. He did find a Brain Geyser, so could consider to copy, for example, the Mana Vault, hopefully finding a second blue. Okay, there's a Red Elemental Blast on the Ancestral Recall. And now also for Thomas, only one card in hand, I believe. And I think it looks like a copy artifact to me. So tapping two here, there's a copy. Yep, passing the turn. And this makes sense because he's got that Brain Geyser in hand. So next turn could Geyser for four potentially. That would get him back into it. And here we see a Wheel of Fortune. Is he gonna, oh, he doesn't have red though. Cannot cast a wheel. I want to say, is he gonna cast it here? Cannot cast it. it has three cards in hand, by the way, not uh, one. I believe there's a Trike in hand 
and a copy. So he really has some mana issues. Could decide to copy, of course, his own mana vault, for example. And then next turn could play out to Triskel and chooses not to, passing, passing the turn. And oh, is that? That's another land. This is great. This Brain Geyser is huge. No counter spell from Thomas, doesn't have it in hand, no red elemental blast either. So this is huge for Oliver, right? This gets him right back into the game, just like that Wheel of Fortune did in game number two. So again, a horrible start for Oliver, but he is getting back into it again, which is pretty amazing. And this um, Brain Geyser was for five, by the way. And now he's really in the tank. Already had his land drop. I believe I saw a Mox Sapphire there in hand. I cannot really identify the other cards, but the Sapphire, not even playing out the Sapphire, though, passing the turn. Another damage here for Thomas, dropping to 16. Those Vaults really hurt. Like, ideally, you want to have a Vault and a Sage of Latinam because then you can sack the tapped Vault to your Sage, actually, actually getting a card out of it instead of taking the damage. But we haven't seen any Sages, actually. Well, we saw one in hand of Thomas. And again, Thomas, you're missing the land drop. So... He had a great start, but now he's missing the lands. Let's see. Ooh, there's a Library of Alexandria and a pass. So Oliver having five in hand, I believe. He's going to try to draw into card six and seven and get an active Loa going. And he has that luxury. Why? Because Thomas is not finding anything. He's just not finding anything. And I would be tempted here to, to copy the Vault. And we see... Oliver here actually uh, using the dice now, thanks to Thomas. So that's good. We know that he's on 18. That helps. Thomas now on 15. Yeah, and this must be so frustrating. Oh, he did find the City of Brass. So that is actually interesting. You don't want to play a wheel, though, because if you play a wheel, you activate the Library of Alexandria here. So just to pass. Yeah, and I mean, it's looking worse and worse here for Thomas. Oliver now having an active Loa. <laughs> Oliver is getting back into this. Finding a Mistress Factory. Also has a workshop, I believe, in hand. Chooses not to play it out yet. Passes to turn and even more damage here for Thomas. And Thomas is really kind of stuck here. He's just not finding the cards that he needs. Now has two copies in hand. Needs to find a way to start casting uh, that trike and then start copying it. Going to tap two here. Probably going to play a copy. It's going to copy his mana vault. That makes sense. Are we now going to see a counter spell? No, we're not. So it's got that mana vault. And then next turn, potentially could start playing out his trike if it resolves, which is a pretty big if, because now Oliver, of course, has an active Loa. So that, so that means a lot of cards, and probably there's some counter magic in there as well. So he's going to untap, takes a damage. You're going to drop to 17 from his own vault. Well, the copied vault, I should say, because it's not his vault. He copied the vault. <laughs> anyway, there's a uh, Mistress Workshop drawing a card now for turn. Going to go, or sorry, from the Loa, going to go up to 8, dropping the Sapphire. I believe an Ancestral Recall there in hand for him as well. Yeah, so now it's going to be really tough for Thomas to... Uh, to get, uh, get back. Because now Oliver has a full grip of cards. He's got that Ancestral Recall. He's got a lot of things to work with. I mean, he's got that Suchi. He could decide to play out the Suchi. Not quite sure, though. He's got more than enough mana to play the Suchi and keep Counter Magic open. It's going to tap three from the workshop. Going to tap the one. Untapping again, though. Really in the tank. Remember, this is the finals. Both players have been playing cards the entire day. We started at 11. And I believe it's around 9, 10 that we're playing this, the finals here. There is a shatter here. So a damage, and look at the life total. Thomas already on 13 because that mana vault hurt him so much. And there's the pass. So I'm a little bit, a little surprised here. I would have expected maybe Oliver to, after that shatter, uh, in second main, play out the Suchi because the coast was clear. But I decided not to. I mean, his hand is still full of 
answers and, and, and powerful spells. He's going to tap two, going to go to 16, or, or three, actually. Is he going to try to play? Who is going to try to play the wheel? He's going to go for the wheel. Are we going to see a counter spell on the wheel? There's the counter spell on the Wheel of Fortune. Is he now going to play that Time Twister? I wonder. Going to play one. There's another Mana Vault and a go. This is so interesting. I believe he's got a Time Twister in hand. I could be wrong. It's hard to see what the glare, but a Time Twister copy and trike for Thomas. And then we have a whole handful of goodies for Oliver has found a trike here, for example. Going to drop the Triskelion on the board. And play an underground C. And there is a pass turn. Yeah, and I believe that Mana Vault was still tapped, right? So he takes a damage from the Vault as well. So he's on 16. That's important, of course, to keep track of. Okay, 15, I, I guess. And Thomas now on 10, by the way. I mean, those Vaults are really chipping away. There's a Volcanic, so he is now finding some lands. Could copy the Triskelion here. He's going to tap six. Okay, there's a strike. And he's allowing it. And there's the copy on the trike. But there's that Red Elemental Blast, so countering. And the Red Elemental Blast really plays a big part here in the game two and three. It's really helped... Oliver enormously here playing an Ancestral Recall in response to the copy artifact being played out by Thomas. So this is a pretty good turn for Thomas. Problem for him now is that his hand is empty. And I love those counters, by the way, guys, on your trikes. Very cool. Lots of trikes here. So 14 now for, uh, for Oliver. And 10 here for Thomas. But, I mean, with all those strikes, this is super risky. Another card drawn here by Oliver. And look at that. He's got two Psionic Blasts in hand, actually. What he could do here is... Exactly. There we go. Double. So he's going to put him on two. And then he can take the counters off. Takes the win here. <laughs> Oh, incredible. I mean, after that start, I really didn't think that Thomas would, uh, or that Oliver would uh, would win it. I mean, I really thought this is going to Thomas in game two and in game three, but Oliver managed to get back into it and winning here, Vienna again in 2024. Congratulations, Oliver. And here we see a picture of both players, Thomas and Oliver. So uh, the guy with the uh, Hawaii shirt, that is Oliver, he is the winner. So wow, that was, uh, what a finals, what a finals. Um, I just wanted to say thank you uh, 3 for one Trading and the Vienna crew for inviting me over. It's, uh, it's really been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, if you want to know more about this event, if you want to read about the event, if you want to check out all the decks, you actually can on 3 for one tradingcom There is an extensive write-up of this event. I'll also add that in the comments below, a link to that. So if you... Uh, read i should say the description below so if you read the description of this video there you will find a link to that article that three for one trading wrote there's there are a lot of pictures of the people that were there there's a link to the live stream there and of course there are the pictures of all the decks so there were some really cool decks and also some really strong decks as we could see today talking about the decks um, you could also have a look at the winning deck here as so you can see it right in front of you what a powerhouse and of course uh what a great, great pilot that uh, brings it here to uh, to the number one spot here at Vienna again. And now before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about helping the channel moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. So if you want to support what I do, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the information. And um, when you're there, you can also find out how you can uh, get your name in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.
Khajiit. 